this looking stuff here. See, I don't even, even know if it's electrical or not, but boy, it looks terrible. It's been there for as far back as I can remember, but it, it looks bad. Uh, anyway, they, 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 just about every journalist question in the last year has had an expansion joint question on it. And uh, it's kind of like that one that you saw in your, your free exam. Um, if you haven't seen it lately, then they may be pulling them back some, but they were, they were real hot on it for about a year there. But uh, anyway, I'm getting kind of off the point. My uh, uh, that burying a raceway below grade, even if you encase in concrete, it's going to be considered a wet location on the interior of the raceway. Because you're going to have some, some temperature differences between the interior of the raceway and, and the concrete itself. So condensation is going to accrue, and, and that's going to affect the thermal properties, which is kind of where you're coming with the ambient temperature. You know, anything that, that, that you know, traps heat with the wire is going to affect the, you know, the, the ability of that dielectric of the insulation to be able to withstand the additional load or the, or the heat transfer over time. And, and so they're really what we watch out for, and they're the two big things that we are concerned with are ambient temperature and, of course, uh, current current conductors in the same raceway and so on and so forth. All right, well, that's kind of a rough breakdown there of really kind of where the questions are coming from, and that's the uh, kind of what the, the uh, sections are. And then on page 18, the first year homework assignments is right here, and this is simply just a list, guys, of, of the most uh, dense per uh, page uh, areas in the code book where questions come from. So for example, out of uh, Article 225 and 230, 230 really is the, the big one. I don't think I have 225 on here, but I got 230 on there. Do I? I don't have 230 on there. No. 110. You're going to have to pencil that in then. Right, right after 220, uh, 225 for the journeyman uh, and 230 for the masters. I can't believe that. I'm on page uh, 18 there, and I, I don't have 225 or 230 on there, so you're just going to have to pencil it in there. Uh, on the 225, a lot of the 225 and 230 kind of du uh, duplicate themselves, so I wouldn't uh, waste a whole lot of time on, on 225, but it's not a bad one to, to review pages 72, starting with article 225.17, continuing all the way to... Um, 225.37 on page 75. So, not too many pages there, but it's uh, some important pages that have. Let me give you an example. This is just the stuff I have, you know, marked in my book here. And there's, she's got a different book that's got some additional stuff. So, I mean, just about everything in there's got, you know, some kind of marking. Sometimes an article will have, uh, you know, multiple questions out of the same article and so on and so forth. And then uh, out of 230, the biggest ones for you guys on 230 are going to be from seven, page 78, which is the beginning of 230, um, to uh, page 81, which is 230.30. Uh, so when you get to that point, you can kind of skip back to the back part and pick it back up on page 84 through uh, 85. Well, yeah, 84 and 85. But just out of those you know, 10 pages there that I gave you, there's probably 75 some odd questions out there. And then on any given test, you're going to have four or five of them that come out of those four or five or those 10 pages and just on every journeyman and master in your flat out. So that's what this list is, guys. It's one of those lists that, if, if nothing else, before you go take that test, you're going to need to at least have gone through these sections the best you can. No, don't memorize them. You don't have to, to you know, uh, highlight the whole thing. But it, it is a good idea to kind of do that on a repetitive basis for a couple of weeks prior to going into the exam. And it really helps a lot of guys to kind of have a, a focus on. There's probably not, but maybe 100 pages all told in that, that whole list right here. And so it, at least it, it saves you from having to read the whole uh, code book over and over again. All right. Now, if uh, if I know where those questions have come from in the, in the past on the uh, exams, then it'd be nice if somebody would have made a list of all of the stuff that's been on people's tests prior to you guys sitting in front of me. And so if you look on page 27, uh, you're going to see exactly that. And that is, honestly, I think this is worth the price of admission just, just in and of itself. Now, it's, it's a pretty long list. I, I grant you that. But it continues all the way back to uh, page 40. It actually ends on page 39, but then on page 40 and 41, I've got some new stuff that has come up recently that I kind of added in there. And I didn't have time to, to uh, go back and feather it in where it belongs. But all the way up to page uh, 39, they're all by article in order, uh, by category. So that's as close to a uh, keyword cheat sheet as you're going to get out of anybody, really. It's, it's a 
it's a list of, of exact articles, and if I've got some notes or keywords or, or specific parts out of one or two, and that's what the, the stuff that I've got kind of noted to the side of it. And so the stuff that's on page 41 and 40 and 41, those are just additional ones that have just recently come up, and I really hadn't had time to go back and, and uh, integrate them into the front group of those other ones. But if you look at the front group there, that's the ones that I've had uh, done all the way up to about, uh, I guess I put this last list in about two weeks ago. I just haven't had time to kind of integrate them in. But let's look on page 27, for example, page 28. So look on page 27 and 28, and I think it'll make a little bit more sense. I'm, I'm kind of going over some of this stuff a little fast, and it's because it's, it's just stuff that I need to cover, but it's not a, anything I want to spend a whole lot of y'all's time on. But the, uh, the breakdown there, guys, is that for definitions, for example, if, if there's been a definition on somebody's test, I've tried to put it on this list. So these are the ones that if, if they're not a direct definition question, they're an indirect question. In other words, they're part of a clue or something that they've used in another test question to to change your answer in a, in a point that, that you need to know what that definition means so that you'll be able to catch it, right? Um, perfect example of that, if you have a, uh, an emergency generator installed to feed a building and I think they give you that it's, you know, it's clear of debris, there's not anything obstructing your view, so it's within sight of the building that it serves, right? And if you look under 700.12 uh, in your code book real quick, what they're asking you about this is whether or not you need an additional disconnect means what it boils down to. But it's a, they give you a, a, a emergency generator, and the page number for this is um, on page six, uh, 701, it's uh, page 625. At the very bottom left-hand column under number six where it says outdoor, uh, outdoor generator, sets on page 625. So they tell you you got a building here that you've got a, uh, a raceway that's coming into and over here on this pad where they've got a generator located your ATS has got a disconnect switch that's built into it. It's readily accessible and it's within inside of the building so you can see the building just as clear as possible. They're asking you what do you need right there with those conductor serve or pass and in fact they use the almost exact wording that's at the end of that number six where it says underground conductor serve or pass through the building or structure and the choices are do you need additional disconnect means do you need a knife switch do you need a plaque or directory of, of some description or something of that nature but they also tell you that even though it's within sight it's 52 feet I think is what they give you as the distance but it's clear obstructions. And this article tells you real clearly that you know as long as you have that uh, disconnect readily accessible, located you know within or within the uh, site of the uh, building, you don't have to have an additional disconnect there. So you can see how you would almost talk yourself out of, of answering a disconnect switch because it's telling you right there you don't have to have one. But what's the difference between you know within sight and 52 feet? I mean, it's what is within sight? What's the code to find that distance as? 25 foot within sight? Uh, there's, there's, there's a 25 foot rules for disconnects for sure, but, it, but as a general rule, what, what's the, def, the actual defined term of within sight? What does that mean to the code book? Because to me, I mean, you know, 25 feet, 50 feet, 55 feet, it's all pretty much the same. If I can see 50, 50 feet, I can see 52 feet just as easily, right? You're saying 50 feet. That's right. The code literally goes blind at 50 feet. So it could be as plain within sight for you and me as, as, as we want it to be, but the code says that 50 feet is what they define as within sight and you know, clear obstructions and blind view and that kind of thing. But, but after that, so they gave you kind of an embedded clue there where the defined term of what actually a, a, you know, within sight means and what that length is makes all the difference in the world how you answer a question like that. But you can kind of see where you'd be almost talking yourself out of the correct answer pretty clearly because you've got an article there telling you just as flat as it, 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 it's plain as day that you don't need an additional disconnect means. So to answer that question, and by the way, that's a, that's a question that's been on the master's test for forever. It's still floating around out there. So uh, you would have to have an additional disconnect means if you're 52 feet because you're, you're outside of the 50 foot. That's right. So that's what that list of definitions that I've got there is for. The uh, other thing is, is that there are some definitions that are in the code book that, that aren't going to be in Article 100. Article 100 is just going to have general defined terms. 
So if you have a specific question, for example, on the Germans test, there was one that, in fact, I talked to you about it just a minute ago. What do you call a piece of equipment that takes, I mean, we know what a DC to AC, uh, you know, uh, piece of equipment does. We use those in solar uh, systems and other things, shoot for uh, wall charges, your phones and stuff. But what do you call something that takes AC power and converts it to DC so you can charge a battery? Is it a converter? Yeah, converter. Yeah, converter. You sure it's not a transformer or a, in, or a rectifier? Rectifier is the data rectifier is like the motor. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. It's the definition of an inverter. Now, the, the actual defined term won't be in Article 100. It's going to be in the dash or the dot two. Tell my age, the dash. The dash went away from several code editions. Back now we get dots instead of dashes. But it's uh, uh, look at 690.2 real quick, and you'll see that I think there's a probably more uh, definitions in that article than there are just about anything else. But 690.2, by the way, the dot two on any article is going to have definitions that are specific to that particular article, if there are any. So there's by far a lot more specific definitions in the dot twos out through the code book than there are in Article 100. So be, be careful of that. But the definition of an inverter on page uh, 594. Yeah, 594, it's on the right hand column there in the middle. Look at the second part of that uh, definition there, and it's almost verbatim uh, the way they've got the question constructed. And it is an inverter, so it's just a, just like taking DC to, to AC. Anything that changes from one system to the next, uh, modifying a voltage value, of course, that's a transformer, but this is a this is an inverter. So that list of uh, definitions that I kind of got over here to the side. It's uh, in bold and underlined on page uh, 27. That's a few of them that have given guys a, a, some heartache on the exam here and there, so I've tried to kind of uh, encapsulate them for you. Uh, that twofer, you may know, do you, you believe that's actually a defined term in the code book, twofer? I mean, what, what the hell is a twofer? <laughs> it could be a good thing, I guess, depending on what you're, where you're at and what you're doing at the time. But, um, in this case, it's it's actually a defined term, and it's it's. I don't think they tell you that it's in a theater. I think they just ask you what the definition of Jupiter is. I don't think.